Maar Eric, dit is zo voor Caribe. Nee, water rafting. Water rafting. Spiering. Die met zijn met pas dit. Dat is het Oh, that wet look. Right. Animal Kingdom, April 19th. Do you do? Hey, Jambo Wilson, we're heading into the reserve at Little Achori Forest. Look on the right, see the two animals over there? Keep your eyes open and drink. Now, charge at 35 miles an hour and have an inch thick hide, so they really are pretty much protected against everything except for humans. And even on reserves, they're not completely safe from poachers. The reserve was established in 1971 for the protection of local wildlife and a lot of them have become less afraid of humans. Get used to seeing us. Great news for us, we get to see them up close. Like this bongo up here on the right. You see at the top of the clearing, there's a couple of deep tan color animals with white markings. They're bongo and bongo are otherwise known as the ghosts of the forest because they are so rarely seen. And both male and female have those horns that slope backwards. The slope lets them run through the forest without getting them caught up in the tree branches. But it does leave these animals vulnerable to poachers because we can get so close. So the 800 square miles of the reserve is constantly patrolled by those wardens, both in the air and on land. We're going to stay in touch with them throughout our journey. Beautiful big black and white birds up here on the left are saddlebill stork, Africa's tallest stork. They can stand five feet tall, in fact, with a wingspan of eight to nine feet. And they get their name from a saddle-like pattern across the top of their feet. Well, we're going to head down to the Safi River now, where I'm really hoping that we might spot some Nile hippo. And of course, you might think a hippopotamus should be easy to see, because they're so big. But they do spend many hours of the day underneath the water. In fact, they can spend five to eight minutes completely submerged under there at a time, without coming up for rest. So even where you don't see them, doesn't mean they're not under there. And there is one just here, look. But this is not a place I can stop. I'm going to head up river, though, where I can stop. Hopefully, we'll see some more up there. Here he goes under the water. <laughs> they come out onto the bank at night to feed, eating between 100 to 150 pounds of food each every night, mostly grass. Well, it looks like there's some on the left of the island. Not very visible. Let's head the other side of the island. Looks like there's one in the water there. Oh, okay. Okay. The large gray and white birds with the really big beaks are pigback pelicans. They live in colonies and they work together to herd fish into shallow water for easy feeding. There you get a pretty good look at a couple oh, yeah, of sure that. there. They weigh around 80 to 85 pounds when they're born. Fully grown though, they can tip the scales at around 5,000 pounds. That's a lot of grass, huh? Well, I know that right around this corner, there's a rickety old bridge. So please are going to stay seated for me as we head across it. Little ones, by the way, are welcome to sit on your laps if they can see better. Just please make sure that even on your laps they are fully seated at all times. Oh my goodness, yeah. Please do stay seated because look down here on the left. Woo, a whole bunch of Nile crocodile. And they are larger and much more aggressive than American alligators. They grow up to about 20 feet in length with bone crushing power in those jaws. And if you do see any lame with their mouths open, it's how they regulate their body temperature. They don't sweat. They let out excess body heat through those open mouths. Huh. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm very glad we're off that old bridge safely. That was a lot of big crocodile, huh? Hey, this is the one over. Thanks for the tip, Wilson. We'll head that way 
shortly. So we're going to head out into the savannah, a completely different ecosystem from the forest with different animals. And speaking of different, check out on the right, big old upside down looking tree is a baobab tree. It survives long periods of drought by storing water in its great big sponge-like trunk and by staying leafless for about nine months out of every year. Oh, now this has got to be one of my very favorite sites in the whole of the reserve. It's the Serengeti grasslands. Serengeti. Stretches for hundreds of miles across East Africa. A super highway for billions of migrating animals each year. And also home to some of the more famous ones like lions and elephants. This is the wild Africa. We're all working really hard to conserve. There's a giraffe in front of us. Look on the right, a couple of them over there. Now, if you look at the trees out here, you can actually get a pretty good idea of the height of the tallest giraffe in the area because wherever you see the leaves growing, probably means the tallest giraffe can't quite reach them with his long, powerful tongue. Look on the left there, you see a beautiful Patterson's Elan. They have those gorgeous long spiral twisted horns, Africa's largest antelope. Male can stand six feet tall, that's just to his shoulders, weighs around 2,000 pounds. Looks like there's another one just a little further along here. Oh, and they're not. Let's see. Let's go hang out. Oh, look at that one. Isn't that beautiful? They're actually fantastic jumpers, too. They can jump six to eight feet high from standing. Pretty amazing, huh? Now these giraffe are both Maasai giraffe. They're one of the smaller species of giraffe. Oh, but there's one closer to us here, look. This is a reticulated giraffe, much larger species. Different patterns. The reticulated has a fairly open kind of net shape pattern with straight edges. The Maasai have more of an oak leaf pattern. But no two giraffe, no matter which species they are, ever have the same pattern. They're all unique to them, just like our fingerprints are unique to each of us. Now this is a female reticulator up there. Now these white bearded wildebeest you'll see do have a whitish beard under their chin. Wildebeest is an Afrikaan word, it means wild cattle. They get their other name, GNU, because that sounds like the grunting noise they make. The cone-shaped mounds either side that we're passing are termite mounds. Termites make them from dirt mixed with their saliva. Then the sun makes them as hard as concrete and elephants use them as scratching posts. When they wear them down, antelope and smaller animals will use those mounds as lookout mounds. They'll stand on them to watch out for things like lions and cheetah hiding in the grass. And look at these enormous horns in front of us on the right. These are on the Ancoli cattle. Those horns grow five to six feet in length. And they're also known as Watusi cattle. That's for the Watusi tribe that first domesticated them. Very impressive horns, aren't they? Males by look of it. No, well, let's go see if we can find some more. That's like a Oh, okay, I don't remember this old bridge. Maybe I better turn the music off and concentrate. Although, you know, before we left the reserve wardens were talking about a bridge out here. I think they meant this one from the look of it. Yeah, apparently this bridge used to be really, really rickety, but they've been working on it and they tell me it's good and solid, so fingers crossed. Yeah, I see the duct tape. Um, I, I think we better get off of here. I don't like the noise that it's making, so we better just get off while we can. All right, well, it looks like they did a pretty good job on it after all. Ooh, lucky for us, huh? Oh, yeah, because yeah, we're at this red clay pit spot. Do you remember Wilson told us he'd seen elephants here? In fact, you can see their tusk marks and footprints. They like to eat the red clay for its beneficial minerals that they might lack in their diet of plants. And both male and female African elephants do have tusks. Unfortunately, though, we have to constantly be watchful for those poachers. They will sneak into reserves here in Africa and actually kill the elephants for their ivory tusks. But the more we know about them, the better able we are to protect them. So scientists in the reserve are studying elephants' vocal communications. They're hoping to get a better understanding of their interaction and what they need to survive. Unfortunately, it looks like most of the herd was back behind those rocks. There is one or two down. Oh, in fact, there's a young one over there. Look at that little one. How cute is that? Now that one's got to be less than a year old. How adorable. Young one with it there is uh, maybe about five or six years old. Now they stay with their mothers. You can see mom down by the side of the watering hole there. Till they're 14 or 15, they learn all they need to know from her. 
And it is about that age that the young males do go off on their own. Love a young one, a couple years old at the back there. Now she's wearing that branch very nicely. Actually, elephants will throw dust, dirt, mud, or grass over themselves to act as sunscreen. They have surprisingly delicate skin that can actually get sunburned. Plus, it acts as a bit of an insect repellent for them too. Okay. And I'm really hoping that it might be our lucky day to spot a white rhino from oh. here. There's a mud hole here where they love to roll. White rhino are one of Africa's greatest success stories, hunted close to extinction. But thanks to conservation and anti-poaching efforts, their population has at least been brought back to more sustainable numbers already. And it looks like something big's been in that mud, so let's hope they're still in the area. Oh, in fact, there's one or two up there on the far left. They weigh four to five thousand pounds. Despite their size, though, they're very vulnerable to poachers because they have such poor eyesight. Larger, but much less aggressive than the black rhino. On the ground close by, we'll head up the other side. On the right, there are some brown animals. They're Bontibok, with the white flashes on their face. Very rare sight. Bontibok are pretty much extinct out of the wild. You'll only see those on reserves. Well, I think that lion's got his back to us, so not going to see his face. But let's go see if we can find a female. Oh, she's right alongside of us. Hey, in fact, let me pull forward a little bit. If you look back through the grasses there, you can see her pretty well. You can see the male up there too, from the back anyway. Can't sure do know how to relax, don't they? But that would be why Wilson sent us this way for sure. And thank you, Wilson. Oh, and these holes in front of us, these are burrows. They're dug out by the largest burrowing Super animal. Right. The very cute and cuddly warthog. I don't see any warthogs though, or maybe he's tucked up in his burrow somewhere. Wouldn't want to mess with a warthog. They have two know. sets of tusks, top long ones they'll use with their tough snout to dig out their burrows. So short razor sharp lower ones they'll use for their protection. They'll often back into the burrow, leaving those tusks poking out for protection. More ostrich eggs there on the left. And there are those bounty bark on the right. Oh, oh my, what do you say guys? Can we help Wilson go round up those poachers? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Alright, Cats. Hey Wilson, we're on our way. Round oh, the other, round the other poachers. Well, you know that must be the poachers. Smash them open. We better go this way then. But it does mean that we're going off the reserve. Woo. Off the and reserve. This could get really bumpy. Hey Wilson, can you see us? How can we help? Woo! Oh, that's really poachers! <laughs> In that way. That's a rough though. Oh no, geysers. Uh -oh. oh, I uh -oh. hate geysers. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm really not sure I like the look of this place. Oh my god, I got good shots. Oh, I think we better get out of here. Hold on, we're gonna make a run for it. We will get out just as fast as we can, okay? Uh oh, but there's a cat. Well, maybe we can sneak up on some coaches. Whoa, yeah, let's get out of here. More coaches. Oh. Hey, Wilson, we found the poachers in camp, but it looks as if they ran. I think we're too late. Oh, not to worry. You dropped them right into my patrol. All right, we chased them right into the woods' hands. Let's go see if we can help. Hey, you know what? round up those coaches but it does mean that we've got our bus schedule tracked and I'm afraid we're gonna have to cut our two weeks of fire each short. I'm gonna drop you at the local warden's village. It's just a short walk back to Harambe village. And as Wilson said, Asante Sana thanks for helping us to protect our precious wildlife. Akuna Matata! Thank you for the help with conservation efforts to help protect wildlife and their habitats. As we're heading up to the warden's post, if you could take the opportunity to gather up any belongings from those net bags, yeah. also check the seats either side.